guys, Nick here with What Game Now, and this is the first video in a series of convention discussions that we're going to do. These are conventions that I've attended, maybe Dave's attended, and I, and basically we're going to talk about them, how they work, and why you as some, a player or a gamer might want to attend these. And the first one we're going to talk about is one called Warfare Weekend. Um, I personally know one of the guys who runs it, Eric Gonzalez, also known as Gonzo. And Warfare Weekend is a three-day convention held in St. Louis, Missouri in the first half of November. It usually tends to be the first week, maybe the second weekend of November, depending on how things fall. Now, the nice thing about it is it's a fairly short convention, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, although there are Thursday night festivities. And among the conventions we're going to talk about, it's actually one of the cheaper ones. And the reason why, and this isn't what we want to get out there right off the bat, is Many conventions require you to pay an entry fee for the convention. That can be thirty to fifty dollars, as I've I've seen anywhere in that range. And then every event you want to participate in, you have to sign up for in advance, and you also have to pay an additional fee for that event. So, for example, Adepticon, another video that's going to be coming out in this series fairly soon, you pay for your event, the convention registration and then the event registration. You can spend $150 at Adepticon just to get there and be able to play in events. Warfare Weekend does not do this. Warfare Weekend is a flat charge. I think it's, I'd have to go back and double check the exact number, maybe like 50, 60 bucks. Don't quote me on that number, I have to go back and double check, but the point is it's a one-time expense. You pay your entry fee and you get access to everything the convention has to offer every event, you name it. Now, you can, if you're going to be there for a shorter amount of time, or maybe only want to, say, do painting things, buy badges for single days, maybe it's a couple days, or it's a painting only badge, or whatever. The point is, it's a single expense that you don't have to, you don't have to pony up more money to play in events. Once you've gotten into the convention, you've gotten into everything the convention has to offer. The convention itself, at the time of this video, takes place at the Sheraton Westport Chalet Hotel, although they might be moving, you never know, conventions. And it's a very spacious location, lots of room, it actually is attached to its own hotel, so you can stay at the convention, so you no need to do any travel or anything like that, or commuting. It sits right next to a large number of restaurants and small shops, so if you're bringing a significant other who maybe doesn't want to game with you, there are things to keep their attention, there are restaurants and there are things like that that if you don't want to deal with the hotel, you can go there instead. Historically, the hotel runs around a hundred bucks a night, hundred to a hundred and ten bucks a night for a two bed or a two bedroom, which for convention rate is not that bad. Um, my advice to many conventions is get there the day before. So this convention is Wednesday through Sunday. My advice would be plan to arrive Thursday evening and leave on Sunday unless you want to stay for the closing festivities. Now, within Warfare Weekend itself, they, um, well, let's start with a bit of a history lesson. Warfare Weekend actually started life as a convention called War Machine Weekend. It was a private convention put on to support Privateer Press's game War Machine and later its Horde's Companion. As time went on, they, however, began to expand to include additional Privateer Press games, and then fairly recently there was a change in management that has seen a change in um, direction. They're opening up to more non-private press games. Last year was the first year that they had non-private press games there, and I ran a 75-person X-Wing event. So there's X-Wing, there's discussions about 40K. I'm going to be there probably with heavy gear this year. At least that's the plan. Games like Infinity, Guild Ball, all of this stuff. Um, Star Wars Legion was there last year. Uh, you name it. Lo lots of games. The point is, though, it's a miniature gaming convention, and they don't tend to have a lot of GW content there. This is focused on other game systems that are not GW and not historical. They're very open if you want to run an event. I don't know the exact cost, but if you want to host something, I think all they ask is you kick in some swag for them to hand out, like a, um, like a door prize or something. I'd have to go back and get the exact wording on that. But it's not an expensive convention if you want to go there and run things. 
Um, you can just ask them for space, and if they got the logistics to pull it off, there you go. Even better if you can bring your own terrain, mats, everything that you need. Now, the main show at Warfare Weekend is its War Machine and Privateer Press content. They actually host the Warfare Weekend Championships, which in at least the Western Hemisphere is kind of one of the preeminent championships. Whoever wins it is considered to be one of, if not the top War Machine player, at least in the player's circle. And players qualify it by actually attending multiple smaller events and gaining an invitation. And what they do is they host a large War Machine tournament Friday into Saturday, which feeds into their top 32. In addition to this, as they get TOs, you're going to see things like X-Wing, Infinity, Guild Ball. I think last year they had Judgment there. Just, just miniature games, tons of different miniature games. Now, there are options for people to play role-playing games. If you want to go there and have a RPG session, those are available, but it's not the main focus of the convention. The other big thing that they have is painting classes. So many painting classes by some very talented painters. And one of the best things about it is because a lot of it's included in your ticket cost, there is little to any additional charge for the painting classes. You get into gaming events for free, the painting classes might have an additional charge, although historically those tend to be fairly low, if any. And even if you don't want to attend classes, they have an open painting lounge where world-class painters just hang out when they're not giving classes or something, or maybe they're not giving classes at all. They're there just to network with other painters. And you can show up and get painting tips, learn how to do things, and it's a very, very helpful community, i found. So Warfare Weekend, a um, couple of things about it that are probably worth noting. Um, like I said, not terribly expensive, good location. It is in St. Louis, Missouri, and it is in early November. I'll see if I can get Dave to link the address in the show notes to make sure if you guys want to attend this convention. It is a really fantastic convention. I've been going for five or six years at this point, and it's second only to Adepticon in terms of my favorite conventions. Now, some other things that are worth noting is vendors. They do have a number of vendors there who are selling pre-release product. Um, companies like Creature Caster, Muse on Minis, Broken Egg Games. There is a couple local entities that set up shop there and actually have things for sale. So decent vendor area, although it's not a predominantly shopping convention. You can go there if you're going with the companies that are, you know, if you're going for, say, War Machine, you could pick up some cool pre-release stuff. If you want to go for, there was Creature Caster there last year. I don't know who's going to be there in the future, but you know, you got a lot of choices there. There is also, for those who aren't maybe into miniature gaming as much, a open board gaming and large board gaming sessions. I think last year they held a massive Twilight Imperium game that was like 16 players or something like that. So there's people there playing board games, miniature games. The hall is open almost 24-7 for random pickup games. It is a secure location, and you are staying on site. So I found that it's a very safe location. If you, you know, maybe you leave your models out or leave your army on a table, it's usually fine. Obviously, do so at your own risk, but I have heard very few, if any, issues with that. They also host a variety of different kinds of events for various game systems. Uh, War Machine in particular, they have multiple different types of event. Maybe they're focused on new players. Maybe it's focused on some specific format. Also, you've got all the companies there that are giving demos. So Private Your Press is usually there demoing all their products. I've seen Guild Ball. Um, Marvel, Marvel Crisis Protocol was being demoed last year. Tons of stuff to do. And like I said, the big thing about it is it's really not an expensive convention. If, say, you and three friends want to go, you can get one room for three nights, runs around 350 bucks. You've got your ticket prices, which are about $50 a piece. So if you divide that up, that's about 125 bucks a person, which, you know, really isn't that bad especially when you consider the fact that you're not paying for any other events unless you want some painting classes. So Warfare Weekend is one of my major recommendations. If you guys go this year, I will be there actually, and I will probably have heavy gear on me if you want to demo it or play it, or you know what? I'm probably running their X-Wing event this year again. We'll see, there's still some things up in the air. So with that, Nick signing out, have a good one. Hey, this is Dave. If you like what we're doing here at What Game Now, go ahead and click on one of the videos which should be on either side of me or click right in the middle and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell once you subscribe so that you know when we have new videos. Please go ahead and share us with your friends. Let everybody know that we're here. 
Thank you for watching and thank you for all of our subscribers already. And we look forward to bringing you more content every chance that we get.